Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have another lore video for you guys, and this is another top five on San Andreas. I know that you guys love these videos, and on this video, we're going to be talking about the top five most evil things that CJ did. Now, CJ, as we know, did some pretty bad things throughout the campaign. He's not nearly as evil as some characters like Claude or Tony Cipriani, which are much worse than him, but he did do some pretty bad things, and we're going to be talking about that. And to be fair, I have a video coming up also later on, which I'm going to talk about the top five good things that CJ did. But anyways, let's start off the video. I hope that you guys enjoy it, and if you guys do enjoy this series, please do drop a like, because it does help the series out a lot. Starting off at number 5, we have Framing the Prosecutor, who was trying to take down Tenpenny and Pulaski. So when CJ arrives in San Fierro, early on in the story, you have the mission 555 Wee Tip. And in this mission, Tenpenny calls CJ and tells him that he wants him to plant drugs in somebody's car to frame him. Now CJ at first refuses until he finds out something about the target. Carl, how San Fierro? It's fucked up. I can honestly say I wish he was here. Great. Now you got the present for that friend of mine, right? You know, the one trying to get me and old Officer Pulaski into trouble? Yeah. Why don't you put that up in his car and give Wee Tip a call? Hey, motherfucker, the code of the streets is that I don't snitch. I don't give a fuck if he kills you, me, my brother. Street cats don't call no cops. Carl, he's a DA. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, where I go find him? He's at the Van Kauf Hotel in the financial. Oh, for sure. So CJ was refusing to do it. Even though Tenpenny was threatening his brother, he was like, I don't do something like that. That's wrong. The code of the streets says this. We don't frame somebody like that. It's just wrong. But then the moment that he finds out that the person's actually a prosecutor or a district attorney, he goes along with it. So even though, yes, CJ was being framed by Tenpenny, he gladly goes along with it the moment that he hears the guy is a prosecutor. So there's no proof that the prosecutor was actually a bad guy and he was actually trying to stop Tenpenny and Pulaski, which how many people died because of Tenpenny and Pulaski and all the problems that they've caused, all the crimes, all the massive corruption, CJ finds out which hotel the district attorney is actually checking into. And what he does is he follows the valet down into the parking lot, he murders the valet, then he dresses up as the valet, he waits for the prosecutor to actually pull up in his car. He then takes the car, he drives it across town back to his garage, he puts a ton of cocaine in the trunk of the car, then he drives it back and parks it right where he left it. At that point, he then calls 555 Wee Tip and tells them about a suspicious trunk full of drugs. They come and arrest the prosecutor, and instead of CJ actually fleeing the scene, he actually takes personal pleasure in actually watching the prosecutor get arrested. He's actually enjoying this. Hello, this Wee Tip. I seen something highly suspicious you should come check out. Do you know who you're fucking with here? I'll have your badge, you moron. Shut up! You find anything back there? Found anything? He's got half of Mexico in here. Must be two tons of Mary here. What? But, but I've never seen. How could it be? Hell of a defense you got there, buddy! Next at number 4, we have Helping Catalina. So early on in the story, once CJ gets exiled from Los Santos, he ends up in Whetstone. He calls up Caesar and tells him the situation. Caesar recommends his cousin Catalina for CJ to do jobs with. CJ goes to meet up with Catalina and immediately sees that she's in the middle of a bar fight and threatening several patrons there. You big string of Yankee fish! I sing fucking oh. Eunice with more balls than you! What the fuck did you want? Nothing. I'm looking for a friend of mine's cousin, Come on, Mexican bitch. guy. He ain't here. You? But Cesar said you was a real man. Crazy. Lady, bitch. I'm a god fearing peace-loving man of the people. Whatever, asshole. Let's go. Damn, relax, baby. So CJ ends up teaming up with Catalina to commit various robberies in Red County, and this is primarily for him to get money together because his brother's in jail and he's on the run. So he's trying to get some money together. Now, the evil actions here is that CJ ends up helping Catalina, despite her being one of the most psycho and evil characters throughout the GTA series. So what ends up happening is that the first robbery that 
CJ and Catalina generally commit is this gas station right here. Now, nobody really gets hurt here. They end up stealing a tanker. The gas station workers do chase them, and their car gets blown up, but that's about it. They do survive the crash if you do it like this. Now, in the second mission, if you do it in this order, they go to a liquor store to rob it, but a gang robs that liquor store. CJ and Catalina end up chasing down the gang and killing them. But the real evil actions start once they hit the betting shop. At the betting shop, Catalina actually immediately starts threatening the cashiers and even threatens their kids. You want to rob a betting shop? Yeah, you know man enough? Here, Carl. Satchel charges? Where the hell did you get them? Aren't you, you stupid bitch? Stupid fucking bitch! Now I kill you! Eat my shit! Now at this point, one of the cashiers ends up hitting a panic button, but what Catalina doesn't realize is that the, it's bulletproof glass. And so what she does in response is she starts executing random civilians in the shop, and she can execute a few of them, which is really messed up. So CJ went there to rob the place with Catalina, but instead she just starts executing random people there. CJ doesn't, doesn't even attempt to stop her. Then they get into a car and Catalina starts shooting. Die, idiot pigs! I kill all of you police dogs! I killed hundreds of pigs like you! Now, later on, CJ will actually confront Catalina about her crazy actions, but I think the main reason that he confronts her is because he's scared about his own well-being. Not necessarily that he's not necessarily caring about what she does to others, but he's scared that because of her crazy actions, she's putting him in more danger. Take me home, Carl. Okay, look, but we gotta talk about something. What? What do I have to say to you? You're a great girl and all, but you gotta calm down. I know some cold-blooded cats wouldn't act like you. Oh, you get given a lioness and you want a pussycat? Whip. No, I just want... You know why I act like this. No. I'm in love, Carl. A woman's heart is a tempestuous place and you will break my heart. Sometimes I want to kill us both. Please, don't do that. Just relax a little. Grin has... You're fucking psycho. All you little men are scared of strong women. If we're passionate, you say we're crazy. If we're upset, you say we're hysterical. We sleep with men, we're sluts. If we don't put out, we're frigid bitches. Who you calling little men? You went berserk back there. That? That was just another day at the office. You can't stand the heat. Go put your tiny balls in the freezer. Tiny balls? Now just wait a minute. Enough! Just shut up and drive. I'm counting the fucking money. Then you have the bank robbery. At the bank robbery, CJ holds up a bunch of hostages while Catalina is trying to steal the money, and one of the hostages ends up pulling the alarm, and the police show up. Oh, shit! Shit! I give you one simple job! Idiota! Attention all units. Some psychos are robbing the bank in Palomino Creek. Shit! I just bought another donut. Don't criminals have any consideration? We can collect that bribe later. Might as well go and take a look. Now, CJ and Catalina then fight through the police, killing a bunch of them, though some of the police are corrupt, to be fair. However, though, what happens is Catalina ends up crashing her bike, and CJ ends up going back for her and saving her. While this would seem noble in most cases, going back and saving somebody, you also have to remember that Catalina is literally one of the most evil characters ever, like I said. She does not care about anyone but herself, and because CJ ends up saving her, instead of just leaving her there... She goes on a crazy rampage for the next nine years until she reaches Liberty City in 2001. So for the next nine years, you can imagine how many murders, um, horrible things that Catalina has done, crimes that she's just committed alone. J and this could have all been stopped here if CJ just left her there, but instead he went back to save her. Probably because he, he had some loyalty to Caesar, and that was Caesar's family. But at the same time, is CJ really had no concerns about helping Catalina, despite how much of a terrible person she really was. At number three, we have murdering the construction workers and suffocating the foreman. So in the mission deconstruction, this is shortly after CJ gets to San Fierro, he hears from Kendall that some of the construction workers have been saying nasty things to her, calling her a hooker. What is going on? Do I look like a hooker to you? What? Those 
hoes keep saying shit to me. Who said this to you? The construction workers up that hill. I'ma fuck them up. Nah, hold up. I got this. I need to go teach him a little respect, huh? That's right. Yeah. I've been thinking about getting me some new land anyway. There's a construction site right nearby. CJ then goes into a fury and doesn't even attempt to try to find out which construction worker said those things to his sister because I doubt every single one of them said it. Instead, he goes on a crazy rampage, takes a bulldozer, starts destroying the portables, killing anybody inside, and also optionally running over and killing any construction workers in his way. In the original version of San Andreas, the construction workers did have guns, but in the definitive edition, they did take that out. So he's just basically killing a bunch of construction workers. He doesn't even know which one actually said it to his sister. And then on top of that, he decides to actually kill the foreman. He kills the foreman by pushing his porta potty into this hole. <laughs> Holy crap, I didn't see nothing. Oh, my son, it's, it's ruined. Then he suffocates him with concrete. He gets in the cement truck and just buries him in concrete. And CJ says, I was thinking about getting me some new land anyway. He never gets this land. He just clears the construction workers off. And all of that, killing all these construction workers and then suffocating this guy in a porta potty with cement because one of them said something nasty to his sister. Not nice, but this is just going way too far. Moving on to number two, we have murdering the Tenpenny witnesses and destroying the evidence. So at the very start of GTA San Andreas, CJ is arrested by Officer Tenpenny and Pulaski, who threaten him and tell him that they will frame him for the murder of Officer Pendleberry, who they actually killed shortly before the game started, unless CJ does various jobs for them. And one of the first things that CJ is blackmailed to do is to kill a bunch of gang members and drug dealers that have some kind of problem with Tenpenny. Now, CJ does this, but he does save Denise also. However, these were gang members. The first person that CJ does kill that's an innocent victim of Tenpenny is in the mission Badlands. So at this point in the storyline, CJ is actually exiled from Los Santos, and you also have to remember that Sweet is in jail. So not only is CJ being framed for the murder of Officer Pendleberry, he's also being threatened by Tenpenny, telling him that he will send his brother to a Bala's block in jail, in which he will most likely be killed unless he complies. No, 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 officer. For once, let's let the kid do something good with his useless life. He's gonna help us with the fight against crime. Right, Carl? Yeah, by any means necessary. Now you stay the fuck away from smoke and stay the fuck away from us. Otherwise, Sweet's gonna find himself on a baller's block getting in touch with his feminine side. Hey, Hernandez, you gonna Come piss here. all day? Get your hands off me, man. For some reason, we've got a little problem with a former friend of ours. He seems to disagree with some of our methods. No, who could do that? Yeah, you'll never find anybody as fork-tongued as this snake-ass bastard. Soon as he gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar, He'll whistle any tune internal affairs wants him to. See, they got him hiding up Mount Chilean someplace, so they can manipulate his testimony any way they want to. I want you to pay him a little visit, Carl, and destroy all his evidence before he testifies. Sort this out, Carl, so Officer Tenpenny can sleep easy at night. Man, we want evidence he ain't gonna talk. So I do understand that CJ is being blackmailed, but the reason that I consider this an evil act is because CJ really has no conscience about this. He really has no remorse for killing these people. In fact, CJ is more pissed off that he's being threatened and blackmailed than that he's actually killing somebody. That part he doesn't really care too much about. So CJ goes on over to the safe house. He kills the, um, the police officer that was going to testify against Tenpenny, takes a picture of the body, and kills any other FBI agents in his way. Later on in the mission 555 We Tip, it was that prosecutor incident that I told you guys about, but I wanted to talk about that as separate because CJ seemed to enjoy doing that. So later on in Snail Trail, Tenpenny has another job again for Carl. Well, what we want is to get on with our jobs in peace without some damn bleeding heart liberal poking his nose into affairs he won't even understand. The press on here 
What the hell would you know about it, boy? Whoa, easy there, Eddie. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Some young journalist out there is trying to get a name for himself. He doesn't know how the streets work. That he's supposed to report what he's supposed to report. Yeah, anyway, we need you to shut him up for us. And that stoolie. Shut him up, too. Yeah, there's some reporter who's digging up dirt on Pulaski. We don't know who's talking, but we know the reporter's meeting him today. Take care of him. This time, he wants him to follow a reporter that's going to meet a contact in Los Santos that's going to give him some important information about Tenpenny. Tenpenny doesn't want this story to be published that's exposing his corruption. So CJ once again complies, shows no remorse for his actions, follows the reporter all the way to Los Santos, and kills the reporter and the contact. Then later in the story, once CJ starts working for Torino, Torino turns out to be a top government agent, most likely CIA. But the point that I'm making is that Torino's connections are way more important and way bigger than Tenpenny's connections. Torino actually promises CJ that he will protect Sweet in prison. Over and out. Carl, I need you to do me a favor. Yeah, I'll do you a proper injury, man. What you knowing about my brother? Relax. He's in prison upstate. D-Wing, cell 13. To the left, I got a child killer who wants to rip his throat out. To the right of him, I got a white supremacist who wants to eat his heart, to be precise. Now, don't worry. Tenpenny and Pulaski are really relatively benign, unless, of course, you're a family member of Officer Pendleberry, whom they shot when he threatened to expose them. But you do know all about that, right? Well, look, what about my brother and all that shit you was talking hey, about? Hey, don't worry. Sweet's just fine. He gets touched. A prison guard goes home and finds that his wife and kid have been murdered. Everything's under control. Wow. We'll, we'll talk later. No. Come on, get out of here. So nobody can touch Sweet at this point. He's perfectly safe in prison. Tenpenny has no power over him. But if C CJ is worried about still being pinned for Officer Pendleberry's murder, remember that Torino would probably protect him for that as well. Torino has a lot of connections, and CJ is doing jobs for him. So Torino would most likely protect him. So it doesn't make any sense on why CJ actually goes on over to the crash house in the mission Misappropriation and agrees to help Tenpenny once again. Where's Hernandez with that fucking meat? He's been gone too long, Tenpenny. <laughs> Getting a little edgy, fellas? Ooh. How you like that, you piece of shit? That give you any idea how edgy I am? Whoa! Get up, bitch! You paying attention? Now there's a ruined town out west of here. Aldea Malvada. And there's some piece of shit DEA officer meeting with an FBI agent with a dossier. Now you get the dossier and you make both of them disappear. So at this point, Tenpenny tells CJ about some DEA agent at his Drug Enforcement Admi Administration meeting up with an FBI agent who's going to give him some kind of dossier. The two contacts are going to share this dossier. It's something on Tenpenny. Now, the reason the DEA is most likely involved is because they're investigating the crack trade that's going on in Los Santos. And the FBI it has taken a particular interest in this whole huge police unit crash that is involved in this, um, in this whole crack corruption scandal. CJ doesn't show any kind of remorse again, goes on over to the area, and kills the contact. Now, he can just kill the contact. Most people are going to kill all the FBI agents and the DEA agents also at this point. CJ delivers that to Tenpenny, who still betrays him and tries to have him killed. CJ actually escapes, ends up killing Pulaski. Now, later on in the story, this is near the very end of the game, because this is, I consider this number two most evil thing that CJ did, because of all the things that CJ did, all those witnesses that he killed, all the evidence that he destroyed, Tenpenny has now been acquitted of charges. So Tenpenny was on trial, and Tenpenny was charged with murder, racketeering, corruption, all of that gone, acquitted, because of all the witnesses that CJ killed and all the evidence he destroyed. If CJ had ignored Tenpenny on misappropriation, like I said, he didn't need to do anything, because Torino already agreed to protect Sweet in prison, and would have protected CJ as well, but CJ still did it. If he hadn't killed 
those DEA agents and FBI agents, that dossier might have been enough to bring down Tenpenny. But because CJ didn't do that, in that spare time, Tenpenny was able to commit a bunch of other crimes, and this leads to the worst possible thing that happened here, which is the triggering of the Los Santos riots. Five years. Cops always get off easy. Yeah, I heard that. Lost evidence, retracted witness statements, and now the disappearance of fellow officer Jimmy Hernandez and officer Pulaski himself. Pulaski's dead. And so is Hernandez. That's oh, Tenpenny's trial. That bastard Pulaski will probably just turn up listen, dead listen. just like the rest of them. In light of the lack of evidence against my client, the district attorney's office has seen fit to drop all charges what? against this innocent man. That's bullshit. You see? Since you can't He's not innocent. Innocent man. This surprise decision is wholly unprecedented. Oh man, ain't no justice. It's just I know. Us. I've been arrested numerous times for totally natural be behavior. Los Santos will burn tonight. Ain't nobody what? gonna be riding in my hood. I don't know about that, Holmes. Look, the whole city is going up. Oh, People are fucking go. pissed off about Damn. this. People don't know what they want. We all being you. You see, man, it's always the same, friend. Power systems corrupt everyone. Look, I said we gonna secure the hood. We ain't getting shit together so some idiot can burn it down. When the public found out that Tenpenny had gotten acquitted, they were furious, and they went out on the streets and caused huge riots. Buildings were on fire, people were getting attacked, killed in the streets, and huge gang wars started between the Balas and the Vagos on one side, and Grove Street and the Aztecas on the other side. So a lot of people died. Gang members and plenty of innocent people, a lot of property got destroyed, the whole city was in absolute chaos. And this because CJ had helped Tenpenny out. So how many people died in the Los Santos riots, we don't know. But judging by the fact that this went on for at least a few days throughout the story, we can assume it was dozens and dozens and dozens of people that died in this. And what's really crazy is that CJ does not even admit to Sweet that he was the reason that Tenpenny had gotten off, most likely ashamed of that. Take a listen to what CJ actually says. So Tenpenny was, um, uh, the prosecutor dropped all charges against Tenpenny because of all the witnesses no that justice, Carl man. had, um, How killed like and Tenpenny all the evidence he got rid of. Man, I don't know. Just the way shit stacked, I guess. Man, this is fucked up. We should take that bastard Sweet down. Sweet doesn't know set. that, um, uh, will, Sweet. CJ, CJ was blackmailed by Tenpenny. I don't think he's fully aware of what, everything that CJ had to do. CJ knows very well why Tenpenny was acquitted. And the reason I don't think he tells Sweet is because Sweet would never have agreed to that. Even if Sweet knew that CJ was protecting him in prison, he would have never agreed to that. He would have said, no, screw that. Don't help Tenpenny at all. I don't care if it's protecting me. He would have never agreed to something like that. But CJ still went out of his way to go and do that, killing all those witnesses, and then ends, this ends up causing the Los Santos riots, which killed, you know, God knows how many people. And number one, the most evil thing that CJ has done, in my opinion, is ruining Mad Dog's life. Now, I know that this one might not seem nearly as bad as the other ones that I've mentioned on this list, but trust me, there's more than just ruining Mad Dog's life, and this is the one that CJ is the most known for out of all the bad things that he's done. So, what has happened here exactly? Is early on in the story, CJ talks to his friend OG Loke, or Jeffrey as I should say, after he gets out of jail. Jeffrey's working a job at Burger Shot and wants to be an aspiring rapper. Now Jeffrey's idea is for CJ to actually go and break into Mad Dog's mansion. Mad Dog is the most popular rapper in San Andreas and steal his rhyme book. But um, we have to think about something. Man, how about if I get somebody to write something for me, only they didn't know about it. What? He means stealing. <laughs> I think I just might have found a dose writer. I become the recital all nighter, all writer. <laughs> Mad Dog's rhyme book from his home in the hills. Mad Dog's rhyme book? Man, you said you helped, Carl. Come on, man. I'm hot like fire all nighter, hey, all hey, writer. Hey, hey, I'll I do anything, I homie. I swear that. Okay? Now, CJ doesn't want to go along with this at first, but the reason that he does go along with it is when Jeffrey pushes him, and I think the ultimate reason that he helps him is because CJ doesn't want to be seen as a buster. He Remember, he left Los Santos five years ago, went to Liberty City, kind of abandoned his family, and so he doesn't want to be seen as that guy that abandons people again. He wants to prove himself back to his gang, to his friends, to his family, that he's loyal, he's there to help, and so that's why he ultimately goes along with this. 
So CJ goes to Mad Dog's mansion, and inside he kills a bunch of guards quietly. So he goes his, out of his way, just killing all these guards, gets to a Mad Dog studio right here, steal his rhyme book, and then kills a bunch more guards on his way out. But it doesn't end there. So now OG Loke has Mad Dog's rhyme book, but he wants more. He wants Mad Dog's manager dead. Man, I can't get it down for nothing. Motherfuckers always want to keep a nigga down. And that CPO, Mad Dog's manager, is putting on me real heavy, man. He covered my style for real. Heavy? Man, he five foot three. But that fool's strong. Man, we gotta take him out. He done blackball me, man. I can't get in the game no way. I told you, I'm an artist, a communicator, and nobody can even hear my message. He going around telling everybody I'm whack. Well, he obviously ain't heard your new shit. That shit is outrageous. That's what I'm talking about, man. Down with a frown, on the tail, a sad clown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what you want me to do? I want you to take that motherfucker out. Kill him? Well, I ain't mean, Dana. Listen, he gonna be attending some ball ceremony, and that's the only time he leaves dog side. CJ, once again, is opposed to this. He doesn't want to kill Mad Dog's manager, but ends up doing it because OG Loke pushes him to do it. Remember, CJ doesn't want to be seen as a buster, so he goes and does this for his friend, or at least he thought he was his friend. So what CJ does is he kills one of Mad Dog's manager's bodyguards, takes his car, pretends to be that same bodyguard, and picks up the manager and his girlfriend. And so then he drives off and security tries to stop him. Now, the Mad Dog's manager is not completely innocent as he says he has direct connections to the Obalas, but his girlfriend is pretty much an innocent victim here. However, CJ doesn't care. And what CJ does is he actually drives them to the pier and then he jumps out of the car, drowning both the manager and the girlfriend when they can't swim. And on top of that, he gets rid of any witnesses that are chasing him. Hey, man, take me back to Dog's Mansion. Not today, asshole. Today, we taking the scenic route via the bottom of the ocean. usual driver. Unlock this fucking door. I can't fucking swim, you fucking psycho. Ah, so I've heard. What you want, fool? Money? I got bitches. Loads of fine bitches. Take them. They'll do anything you want. You want a record contract? Man, I can make any fool a superstar. I know people in this town. Powerful people. Dangerous motherfuckers. You Grove Street families? I know ballers OGs. We like brothers. They'll fuck you up so bad. Shut up! So what ends up happening now is later in the story, CJ gets exiled from Los Santos after he gets betrayed by Ryder and Big Smoke. And OG Loke betrayed him as well because OG Loke is pretty friendly with Big Smoke and Ryder. So, you know, one thing that Tenpenny was right on is he says, homies for life, that's all BS. OG Loke screwed Carl over and used him. Once we get up to the Las Venturas chapter in the storyline, CJ finally meets Mad Dog, and Mad Dog's life has been a ruin at this point. Mad Dog has lost a bunch of record deals, OG Loke stole his music that he was making, and because of that, OG Loke is now famous, Mad Dog's manager is dead, he has no guidance, and Mad Dog has become a drug addict. He also he got addicted to drugs, and even gave his mansion away to drug dealers for more drugs. That's how terrible of a state Mad Dog's life is in, but it gets even worse. Mad Dog is now planning to actually kill himself, so he's about to jump off the roof when CJ stops him. 
Remember these two guys? Joe, the two NPCs John, down John, below? John, man, They're from the betting shop in San Fierro hey, originally. Who's the idiot? That's a washed up rapper. It's Mad Dog. Used to be a real chart topping cat, real player. Mad Dog? Jump! Oh, man. Jump! Come on! He lost all his money in the casino and went bots him. Hey, Mad Dog! What you doing up there, fool? Come on, Come on do I know you? Already. Don't be a I don't think so, Come so on, shut jump. the fuck up. <laughs> this is the end. So far. Uh, oh, get, shit. Get, 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 no, dog. Get, get a grip, dog. Oh, get a grip. You still got it? You still gangster? I don't give a fuck no more. My manager got killed. Some asshole stole my rhyme book. Shit is rough. All the kids like this loco G or whatever the fuck his name is. Some fake ass gangster rapper bullshit. Liquor's my only friend. Yeah. 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 Come on, yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, Come on dog. You just need a new manager, baby. You looking at him? I hate y'all. Just come in off that ledge, man. Hey, don't fuck him out of jumping. We got good money on this. Yeah, good odds too. Damn, this town is cold. Man, jump. Hey, you Stay the fuck jump, away. Bro, Stay the fuck away. I'm the best gambler in the universe. I'll jump. I'll jump. Oh, oh, hell no, I gotta do catch it, this it. fool. CJ ends up saving Mad Dog's life and taking him to the hospital. And what does uh, Mad Dog say? He says he needs a new manager, and CJ volunteers. So here we go, we got Mad Dog to the clinic. Alright, get yourself straightened out. <laughs> he just left him on the, the sidewalk. Carl. What? When I get clean, I'm gonna need a new manager. Thought I might look you up. Yeah, you do that, homie. CJ volunteers to be Mad Dog's manager, but then later on, when he hears about Mad Dog giving his mansion away to drug dealers, he's furious. And at the same time is, he almost tells Mad Dog that he actually broke into his mansion and stole his rhyme book. He never admits to Mad Dog the truth about what had happened. Mad Dog! CJ! Clean, dude. That's good news, man. Hey, what's cracking? You ready to take it to the stage again? Easy, CJ. Come on, man. One step at a time, you know? I'm almost ready, but... But... But what? I want to go home now, CJ. That's cool, man. I'll take you. Where's home? My mansion, baby. Yeah, I heard about that place. Drugs, sex, all that shit. <laughs> yeah, you know it. Yeah, but... yeah, I've been there. I... I mean, I've seen it on TV. Yeah. Nice crib. Thanks, player. We could do with a place like that to set up in the LS again. Wait for sweet. Mmm. Get things moving. Get out this midget game. But CJ, come on, man. What? I saved your life, man. My mansion ain't big enough. Only got 19 bedrooms, you heard? All right, man. My mansion's been seized. IRS? Nah, not exactly. Who? Nobody. Who, Mad Dog? All right, Big Pop. Big Papa? The drug dealer? Man, you gave your multi-million dollar mansion to a motherfucking pusher? You know, CJ, these things happen. I was powerless. You fucking degenerate? Oh, man. How much blow can one guy snort? It's not my fault, CJ. Man, I should have let you jump. Come with me, all of you. We all going home. So what CJ is doing here is, is kind of messed up. He's helping Mad Dog get his life back on track, and he's profiting from it, becoming Mad Dog's manager. So CJ becomes rich as a result of helping Mad Dog. But at the same time is, you have to remember that CJ is the one that caused all these problems for Mad Dog. If CJ hadn't broken into Mad Dog's mansion and stole his rhyme book, if CJ hadn't murdered his... Mad Dog's manager drowning him and his girlfriend. This would not have happened, but he did it, and then he profited from it. Now, did CJ feel some guilt? I think he does feel some guilt, because when Mad Dog says, that's my rhyme book, you can see that CJ is feeling guilty about this. He goes and helps Mad Dog. They chase down OG Loke. Then OG Loke ends up getting sued and his career ruined. No, it's my time again. I know, dude. So what's holding you back? Whoa, whoa, hold up. This is video. I gotta see this fool. Of OG Lokes. Hey man, you clean now. You got nothing to worry about. We're going to hang with the homies. Man, that fake ass Loke. Loke? But he's terrible. Motherfucker. I knew there was something familiar about those rhymes he was kicking. They're from my rhyme book. That's my money. And those are my hoes. 
And that's my video he's shooting today. And so CJ's um okay. basically thinking to himself, I so really messed up here. Because he he stole the rhyme book for OG Loke originally, remember yeah, that? That's gangster. You phony! Ah! Uh, man, you can't prove nothing. Hey, Jeffrey, you a buster, straight bitch. You stabbed me and my brother in the back. Man, I'm an artist. We all make mistakes. Ain't that right, Alki? You ain't no artist. You's a buster. You's a fake. Man, I was gonna give you credit on the next album. Man, royalties? Take that. I got Ooh, more bitch, too. Bitch, I should smack the dog shit out your ass. <laughs> Break your me. face yeah, right here, motherfucker. you phony. <laughs> Mr. Dog, Jimmy Silverman, Blasting Fool's Records. Hold up, I'm the manager. You want to talk? Talk to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pleasure, gentlemen. Let's the talk, all I'll right? Bust your ass. I need hits. I mean hits. Now, what about this guy? This uh, phony. I've got a good mind to sue his ass into next year. Make it off me, you drunk. Hey, Lo, go get us some lunch. You get lunch. Excuse me, gangster. I don't think so. <laughs> Man, get out of here. Don't, don't be pushing me. Don't be pushing me. So that's the end of OG Loke's fake rapper career. Later on in the story, uh, Mad Dog finally gets a golden record. Now, this might seem happy ending and all, but like I said, CJ was the root of all of these problems. He caused these problems in the first place, so we can't really congratulate CJ for helping to get Mad Dog's life back on track because he's the one who caused these problems to happen in the first place. If OG Loke hadn't betrayed him, I don't think that CJ would have really cared. I don't think he would have really cared to help um, Mad Dog. But because OG Loke betrayed him, CJ took it personally and was now going to do everything in his power to help Mad Dog. So he probably did feel some guilt at that point. But at the same time is, you got to remember, all of these things that CJ did, he turned this guy's life upside down, all the security guards he killed, plus drowning his manager and his girlfriend and then lying to Mad Dog about it, pretending to be his friend. Well, I guess he was his friend to an extent, but a lot of it was for show. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below. Are there any other evil things that I missed that CJ did? I'm going to be doing a video on top five good things that CJ did, just to be fair, because I know there are good things he did as well. So like I said, CJ is not as evil as other characters like Claude or Tony Cipriani, but I did want to highlight some bad things. And I might turn this into a series where I might talk about the evil things each GTA character did. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.